Well, damn, son. That's one of the best sine waves I've seen under load out of an inverter like this. Let's see what else this thing does. So what we have here is a lead time. Maybe it's lie time. I don't know, but we're going to say lead time. It's a 2,000 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter. And you can see down here it says 12 volts DC. So we're going to run this on a lithium iron uh, battery, which is actually like 12.8 nominal. And then it says uh, 110 to 120 volts AC. That's our output, and it's 60 hertz. Let's take a quick look at this. Oh, it's heavy. So here you can see there is some mount points, and it does come with some mounting hardware. We'll take a look at that. And then on this side of the inverter, we have two AC jacks here, or plugs. I'm not sure what you call them. We have a power on button, and then we have a display. And then if we take a look at the other side, we have these two terminal posts here. And they are covered in plastic, which I like because it can be very dangerous if you cross your, <laughs> cross your streams or cross your terminals. So this comes with these two plastic cases for these. Let's take a quick look and see what they look like with the cases off. You just pinch and then they slide off. And they go different directions. But when you install this to your system, what I would do is I would make sure that you have the case on the other one so that way you don't worry about contact with a wrench or anything like that. But here we have a post and a nut. You can see there, there is a copper backing here. Now one thing I'm going to mention is, is that if you take a look, these are close in proximity. And so I would like to see those a little bit further apart. Um, and facing opposite directions without any overlap, but it is what it is. And then we have two output fans on the back to keep this thing cool. Before we go any further, I did want to say that I was contacted by the fine folks at Lee Time, and they asked if I would do a review of this inverter. Of course, I said yes, so they sent it to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is easily triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. We'll take a look at this in greater detail, but uh, it did come with a product manual and then it came with some mounting hardware. So you can put this onto a shelf or a board or a wall, however you want to mount it. It does say to mount this in a horizontal fashion. And then it came with these wires for connecting to the battery. I think it said they were a foot and a half long, but it also said in the manual that they were consisting of two eight gauge wires. And these are four eight gauge wires. They feel pretty heavy duty. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're pure copper, but I don't know. We'll take a look at that and see if we can find out. So here in the manual, what you can see is it says additional components included in the package are 2x2 times 8 American wire gauge, 1.8 feet battery to inverter cables. And again, you can see that these are four. Now, if we take a look up on here, you can see some labeling and it says AWM looks like 1 8 AFTI 8 AWG 105 to 600 volts. That's 105 degrees Celsius. So it's a good thing that they have four of these on here because you want to make sure that these things don't get overheated. And if you take a look here, it does look like multi stranded copper. Um, it could be copper clad aluminum, but I doubt it because typically at the end of copper clad aluminum, you do see uh, the aluminum. So we feel good about this wiring harness. Okay, we're not going to take a look at everything in here, but just some of the highlights of the instruction manual. It gives you some general installation type instructions. And one of the things it says here is, hey, make sure that all this stuff is turned off. And it's only for 12-volt battery banks. Now, you can have a 12-volt battery bank that is powered or charged by solar panels through a charge controller. And that's probably how we would use this type of inverter. So here's some information around the continuous power, 2,000 watts. So that's not a peak setting. Uh, input voltage, 12 volts DC. Output, 110 to 120. And it's about 3 inches tall. It's about 7 inches, 6.81 inches wide, and 14.17 inches long. And it talks a little bit about some of the mounting holes. We've already covered about this, but it does say it uses M8 terminals on the wire. So here is a table of contents, um, identification of parts on the AC and DC side, so they keep those separate. Most inverters do that. And then here is some information about the panel that you see when it comes on. What we're going to be really concerned about is this, which is how much of the power ratio capability we're using 
our battery input voltage and then our output wattage. And then here is a gauge for the battery. Now this gauge probably is based off of voltage, which doesn't really work so well for lithium, but is pretty handy for sealed lead acid batteries. It talks a little bit about a location and it says to mount it in a horizontal position with about 10 inches of clearance. Here it gives some information about sizing a battery bank and it walks through some formulas and then it goes through an example. So in this example, they say, hey, if you want to run something that takes 1,000 watts for three hours a day, you're looking at about 3,529 watts. Divide that by 2.8 volts, and you need 276 watt hours. So it's one of the things that uh, is pretty handy because a lot of times where I get asked questions about or see people have problem with is that their inverter doesn't isn't sized for the amount of watts that they need to use or their batteries are woefully undersized. So understanding how this works is probably pretty important. Then it talks a little bit about connecting these uh, to your to your battery and it shows in here to connect the positive first. So if you take a look, this shows how to take off those clamps. It has the positive wire getting connected first. Um, that makes it a little bit tougher to get in here to this bottom terminal especially if you have this mounted down so it's a good idea to use something like a socket as opposed to like a box wrench or something like that and then it says once everything's connected you go ahead and you turn it on there's some troubleshooting steps and further specifications in the back we're not going to go through all of this stuff but uh, you can see here our no load power consumption is about nine watts so keep that in mind if you're connected and you're turned on you will be draining your battery Okay, so we have the inverter connected up to this Power Queen 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour battery. I had to use a big boy battery for this because of the draw that's necessary to test 2000 watt output. We have a Kiwi's clamp meter on the positive terminal of the battery so we can see amps out. And then we also have another multimeter connected up so we can read the voltage at the input of the inverter. And I have a small space heater hooked up, and we're going to use that as our initial load. We also have the output, the AC output, coming out of the inverter running through a Kumin watt meter. And that way we can compare the watt reading there with the watt reading on the inverter. So now we have the space heater turned on. You can see a little bit of voltage sag. We're at around 13.10 volts at the input of the inverter. And we're drawing about 550 watts now that's going to go up because i'm continually to turn up the temperature on this space heater and you can see that our output on the cumin watt meter is close and consistent with the output reading on the inverter and that's a good thing right now we're drawing about 67 amps out of the battery so i turn that up to around 85 degrees if i remember correctly and that should pull a little bit more power out we also have a heat gun from Harbor Freight, the world's greatest $9.99 heat gun. And we're going to use that to add additional load. So let's turn that on low. And our output jumps up to around 1,400 watts. We're going to go ahead and we're going to switch that to high. And now we're at around 1950 in terms of watt output. You can see the Kuma watt meter is actually starting to flash overload, so we're probably pulling a little bit too much current through that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that from the circuit, and then you can see the battery sag is down to around 11.9 volts. Now I'll have some links below where you can pick up this inverter or check it out in more detail. Some of those links will include discounts or coupon codes that you might be able to take advantage of. But I removed the Kumin watt meter from the equation, and I'm just running it straight out of the inverter now. And again, we're at around 1950 in terms of watts out. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call that a pass with the 2000 watt continuous. Um, I did let this run for some time after recording and saw no problems at all. Uh, I did not want to push this thing to a peak uh, watt output, but uh, the rating that I read in the manual was 2000 watt continuous, and I believe that it can do every bit of that. What we're doing now is feeding the signal into an oscilloscope to see if this thing really is a pure sine wave inverter. And I have to admit, that looks pretty dang good. A lot of times what you'll see is an approximation of a sine wave, but I generally don't see anything this clean in any of the inverters that I test. What I want to do now is I want to put a little bit of load on this and see if it maintains that sine wave under load. 
and we're going to create about a 25% load in order to do this test by turning on the space heater. And that looks pretty good to me. I want to say thank you to Lee Time for sending this to me and thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everyone.